on this edition of the Fifth Estate. We're in Canada. Yeah. No. I'm in the Maritimes in fields littered with failed dreams and broken promises. I thought, wow, there's some big people here and this is going to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, Caught on camera, a father shows us the price he paid for a chance at a new life in Canada. We just handed over $20,000. The pitch was simple. Turn this part of Canada into the apple growing capital of the world. It had the support of two former members of parliament, three premiers and industry leaders. If you show this to any individual in India, anybody would pay you in just a blink of an eye. It was supposed to be an apple company and it ended up being something else. The original owners say their goal was just to grow apples. But for months, we've been investigating an alleged scheme targeting people desperate for a better life in Canada. They're making money in a multitude of different ways, one of which is selling people a false promise of, of what this country is. They're scamming people for thousands and thousands of dollars. If you have 10 people showed up and they all paid $50,000, that's a hell of a lot more money than growing apples, wouldn't you say? I'm Stephen D'Souza. This is The Fifth Estate. Prince Edward Island in the summer is idyllic, and for many, a perfect getaway. And does this all look familiar, the signs, yeah. the flags? Ah, uh, sure that. But for Yan Lu, returning here only brings pain. This is a terrible place. Here, Yan Lu would spend hours standing and waiting, often with his daughter Emma at his side. The weather was hot, extremely hot, and there were a lot of bugs and mosquitoes. All for a job and a dream that never materialized. I didn't know what was going to happen next or what I would be doing next. I was very confused. His fate was connected to this farm, Canadian Nectar Products, an ambitious idea that became an ordeal exposing a side of the island most never see. Lu moved to Canada from China in 2021. He had secured a student visa for his autistic daughter to attend school in British Columbia. But he says the school wasn't able to support her, so he needed another option. I was in despair and disappointed. Desperate for a job and to keep his daughter in school in Canada, Lu looked to the temporary foreign worker program and ended up at an apple orchard on PEI. Very, very good soil, takes plants very well. In 2014, Canadian Nectar Products broke ground on PEI about an hour outside Charlottetown to great fanfare, and CBC cameras were there. Amarjeet Jatana owns apple orchards around the world. Now he's putting down roots on PEI. Co-founder Amarjeet Jatana was front and center. North America, we are right in the middle of uh, market here in PEI. The plan was unusual. PEI has long been known as the land of potatoes. Well, even myself, I thought you couldn't grow apples here. Barry Balsam was the first to give it a go 30 years ago. Now the island is home to about 20 small apple orchards, none as big as what Canadian Nectar was pitching. Well, it was a dangerous thing, okay. One day, he got a visit from some businessmen pitching high-density, large-scale apple orchards like the island had never seen. And then this black limousine pulls up, and these four characters pop out, and they got little cameras taking pictures of everything. And I said, uh, excuse me, I said, uh, we're closed, can I help you? And they said, uh, we're looking at planting apples. Balsam says Canadian Nectar co-founder Amar Jitjitana, whom he calls AJ, talked a big game right off the bat. Well, AJ is is a very uh, intensive. He's kind of bubbly. He's he's an, he's an intense guy. Yeah. Well, he had apple farm in uh, in apple farming out in Washington State. He had apple farming in um, in uh, British Columbia. He was also planting orchards in uh, Georgia, the country of Georgia and Russia at that time. Just, you know, I mean, he talked apples, and you know, he, he he knew the talk. He spoke the language. He spoke the language. Absolutely, yeah. And Balsam says. Jatana was working with a big-name partner, Germont Graywall. 
For nearly a decade, Germont Graywall served as a member of parliament from BC. He was with the Conservative Party when he famously alleged the Liberals tried to get him to cross the floor. After he left politics, he was looking for new opportunities and PEI looked promising. When the land is fertile, land is cheap, you can add value to land, you can create jobs. Graywall and Jatana had a plan. Take their orchard on PEI, divvy up the land, and resell some of it to investors in India. It would give families overseas a piece of the business and help Jatana and Graywall fund their dream of shipping their product to India. Now, there's two things I won't talk about is quantum physics and the Indian market, because I have no idea about either. Canadian Nectar brought another politician on board, giving her a small share of the company. Known as sharp and no-nonsense, Sheila Copps was a household name during her 20-year tenure as a Liberal MP. To Sheila, who ran such a magnificent campaign. And later, as Deputy Prime Minister. They were going to do Honeycrisp, which is pretty popular and tasty. My husband jokingly referred to me as Little Apple Annie because I was learning all this about apples. <laughs> Cops joined the Canadian Nectar team on PEI, touting the province as the next apple capital of the world. The president of Canadian Nectar Products was at the PEI legislature this week. We see there's a tremendous potential uh, exporting from PEI to the rest of the world. Cops opened a lot of doors, introducing Amarjit Chatana and Gurmont Graywall to then Premier Robert Giz. But Chatana had another partner in the orchard. His name, Kamalpreet Kara. This is where the thing gets interesting because the one person, Kamalpreet Kara, who was approached to be a minority investor, wanted to do immigration, and we said absolutely not. Kara was an immigration consultant from Ontario. Cop says he wanted to go beyond just selling parcels of the orchard to investors in India. His idea, promote that investment as a path to immigrate to Canada. By investing in our apple orchards, you could start your journey to settle in Canada on permanent residency visa along with your family. Did that seem above board to you? Well, I didn't want to go there because, and the PEI government definitely didn't want to go there because this was an application for agriculture. And as soon as you start putting something like that into it, it makes you wonder what their motives are. Are they really interested in apples or are they just interested in p getting people to pay them to emigrate? <laughs> Within a few years of it breaking ground, most of the original stakeholders had left. Canadian Nectar was mired in allegations. And by 2022, Yan Lu arrived to an operation that was not what it seemed. I had no choice. And my daughter couldn't go to school. I was extremely desperate. Lu had asked an immigration consultancy firm for help. He says they offered him a work permit for a job on a farm on PEI. Consultants and companies are not allowed to charge foreign workers fees for this kind of permit. But Lou says they told him the work permit would cost more than $30,000. For the sake of his daughter, he says he felt he had no other choice. Okay, hi. Hi. How are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah fine, thank you. Okay, have a seat. But Lou says he was suspicious, so he decided to secretly fill meetings with the consultants. Okay, right? No, he can't pay the fast in cash. Oh, you need to pay the cash? Yeah. The meetings seem friendly enough, as each time he hands over thousands of dollars. At one point, the employee checks the bills to see if they're real. Sometimes they have a counterfeit inside, so. At another meeting. Plus 20, Anna. The employee makes sure it's all there. Let me just count it. Okay, okay. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Good luck. So she just smiled, gave you a thumbs up, and said, Good luck. How, how did you feel in that moment? You just handed over $20,000. Yeah. Hmm. 
I was just thinking we'd get all of this done, leave as soon as possible, so that I start working for my employer on PEI. Shortly after Lou got to the island, he found himself in the middle of what authorities would later allege was a scheme where consultants defrauded foreign workers for, among other things, charging illegal fees for work permits. At that moment, I felt like I had no way of going back. I must continue down that road. I just felt like I did not give my daughter a chance to grow up, not in a good environment. And we have been away from her mom for too long. Lou came across CBC PEI stories about migrant experiences on the island and reached out to reporter Kevin Yar. Lou showed him the hidden camera video he had recorded. I was really entirely gobsmacked. I've never seen that kind of cash before. And to just to see them counting out the $100 bills, it, this is shocking. Yar began looking into Lou's case. He first checked into the immigration company Lou paid the money to. It was called CWC Immigration Solutions. Immigration expert Mr. Kamalpreet Khera to Anu program. The its owner, Kamalpreet Khera, the same man in charge of Canadian nectar products. This uh, Kyra family seemed to be involved in both. And then, you know, it really started to raise questions with me like, what is this really about? Um, is this about farming apples or is it about bringing in temporary foreign workers? As it turns out, Yan Lu's case was just the tip of something much bigger than Canadian nectar products. Coming up. They're making money uh, in, in a multitude of different ways, one of which is, you know, uh, selling people a false promise of, of what this country is. As we continued our investigation, we returned to PEI in January to try to understand what happened to Canadian nectar products, how the dream pitched to investors failed, and how dozens of foreign workers would say they were duped and exploited. Right off the get-go, there was, there was problems. Truthfully, I, I felt abandoned. We found Canadian Nectar's former general manager, Rod Steenbruggen, a veteran apple farmer. In 2017, he says Kamalpreet Kara personally convinced him to come and run the orchard. My the impression of Mr. Kara was uh, he was well dressed in, in, in a suit and driving a, a nice vehicle. Um, and he was soft spoken and seemed like a very nice individual. I was told Sheila Cox had a, an active role and Germont Gruel and his wife that I thought, wow, there's some big people here and this is going to be a big deal. That spring, he learned Greywall and Cops, both former members of parliament, were no longer involved. Amarjit Jatana was also gone. Kara was now in charge. Once on the farm, Steenbruggen found the orchard wasn't fully set up, bills left unpaid. So what was the response from Mr. Cairo? Well, Rod figured it out. That's what we pay you for. The biggest problem he faced, more foreign workers than he had jobs. People arbitrarily began to show up at the farm at different times of the day, at night. So a couple of them told me that they had paid a fee and they're here to work. Uh, I said, well, this is news to me. More and more and more were showing up. It ballooned to a point that we had uh, 16 or 17 people that we couldn't even communicate with, didn't know their names, didn't know where they were staying, um, nor did we know who was paying them. Steenbruggen says he didn't know that Kamalpreet Kara was also running CWC Immigration Solutions in Ontario. The company was putting out the call for foreign workers, promising permanent residency in six months. She just said that, I come here and I need help. In 2021, Vietnamese workers approached Trung Chen Li, a respected elder in Charlottetown. They had stories of bad living conditions, 
and little or no pay at Canadian Nectar and its affiliates. Most of them, not really, not willing to share the story when first uh, meeting with, with me. In first time, most of them feel very scared. They have to find some way to escape. Companies that hire temporary foreign workers are supposed to provide housing, travel, and a fair wage. What do you think of these companies? I just think that bad, very bad guys. Yeah. First thing you recognize is, is the fear. Um, people are really scared to talk to you. Um, it, it's, it's really upsetting, right? Ryan McRae is a migrant worker advocate at the Cooper Institute in Charlottetown. In 2021, Canadian nectar workers came to the nonprofit for help. And we came in and met with, with the seven workers um, and kind of realized like, hey, this is, a, this is a bit of an extreme situation. He says workers complained of being shuttled between multiple companies, inconsistent or low pay. And some said they were living in a dirty basement, all of which, if proven, would be violations of the temporary foreign worker program. It was almost like it was like a perfect storm, basically, of all these issues. And it's, it's not uncommon for me to hear any one or a couple of these issues on a weekly basis. But yeah, it's not often that they're, they're all as extreme as, as this case was, yeah. It just shocks me that people, they trust them. Aman Panwar is a manager at a different apple orchard on PEI called Jaya Estates. Then when they get duped like this, they, they have no other place to go back to. He helped translate for another former nectar worker who was scared to reveal his identity. It was all a nightmare. It, none of it is true. The man said he, his wife, and young daughter arrived at the farm only to find no work and a windowless structure to live in. It was just unbelievable. Everything that was promised to them, none of it was true. He says he left the farm as soon as he could, but lost thousands of dollars from the experience. It's just a business for them. They don't care about people's life and they're suffering. It's all money, all profit for them. Temporary foreign workers who spoke to the Fifth Estate all describe another experience they shared. They claim they had to hand over cash in exchange for their paychecks, often nearly as much as the check was worth and that the paychecks didn't match the hours, if any, they worked. Uh, I felt like I might have been scammed. Uh, but I didn't want to believe that. Because they promised me a real job. Lou says he paid cash for his paycheck too here at the former CWC office in Charlottetown. When I was told it was a fake job, I felt it was unthinkable. And I didn't know what to do. There was the, the idea that this would support perhaps an application for permanent residency, um, having you know that, that documentation on the books. Lou says at first, there was no work for him. He says a CWC employee told him to come and wait in case a government inspector showed up to check on workers. With no help, he had to bring Emma along. Yeah, this is where uh, we would have went after uh, leaving their, their accommodation where they were working at, yeah. Advocate Ryan McRae says some workers were sleeping on plywood bunks, so he and colleagues from the Cooper Institute took the unusual step of moving them to this motel in Charlottetown. How many workers would you say overall you've helped get out of this situation? Probably at 15. I mean, it's, it's not McRae uncommon. said the workers were stuck at the farm because of their type of work permit. To hire a foreign worker, companies must prove they can't find local employees. Employment Canada then issues a Labour Market Impact Assessment, or LMIA. Right, so that LMIA allows an employer to hire someone um, with a closed work permit, meaning it's tied to that one employer. You know, they can't change jobs. However, if the workers can make a strong case they were abused, they can be eligible for an open work permit to switch jobs. If you can show to the government that you're experiencing abuse, they will provide you with a one-year open work permit where you can work anywhere in the country. 
The fifth estate has learned since 2021, the federal government has given 31 workers from Canadian Nectar and its affiliated companies open work permits. That's at least 31 times officials accepted employee claims that they were vulnerable or suffered abuse. So I was furious. I was furious. I was furious again. Yes, at the employer, of course, but more at the government that is allowing this type of systemic issues to, to happen. In 2018, when he managed the orchard, Rod Steenbruggen says he called federal officials asking for help with the workers struggling at Canadian Nectar. I went to Service Canada on that, um, and they put them in touch with somebody that could translate and, uh, and had a home or a shelter for them, and they were removed. And where they went, I, Stephen, I don't know. We reached out to Employment Canada about complaints. They declined to comment, citing privacy. But despite all the complaints, the government was still allowing Nectar to bring in foreign workers. I'm not a mathematician, but if you have 10 people showed up and they all paid $50,000, that's a hell of a lot more money than growing apples, wouldn't you say? And, and fast. We found that since 2017, the government has given Nectar and its affiliates permission to hire 217 temporary foreign workers. The last instance was 2021, three years after Steenbruggen's call. Steenbruggen said he told Kamalpreet Kara about the issue. He said, I'm not doing anything illegal. He goes, it's not my fault that laws in Canada are so lapsed. In June 2022, after years of complaints... ...tonight, why border officials executed a search warrant at two PEI farm businesses. The Canada Border Services Agency raided Canadian Nectar products and affiliated companies. CBSA alleged the companies worked closely to defraud foreign nationals and Canadian authorities by charging fees to foreign nationals for work permits. The CBSA alleges some of those large fees were for jobs that didn't exist, that workers had to pay cash for false pay stubs. Some workers told the CBSA they went along because of a promise that they could apply for permanent residency after six months. They're making money in a multitude of different ways, one of which is selling people a false promise of, of what this country is. They're scamming people for thousands and thousands of dollars. Those accused of scamming foreign workers, Kamalpreet Kara and his immigration consultancy firm, CWC. But to date, no charges have been laid. Recently, we went to the Canadian Nectar Farmhouse to see if we could find Kamalpreet Kara. Kairos, are they still the, the owners? No, Kairos. The Kairos, no? No. This is Canadian Nectar Products? A worker there wasn't able to help us. Hello? So we tried Kara's home too in Brampton, where he has registered numerous companies. Looking for Kamalpreet Kaira? Someone picked up, but said nothing. In the end, Kamalpreet Kara never responded to our request for comment. He has not, to our knowledge, responded to the CBSA's allegations. Fine, welcome, Guniji. Thank you so much. And but it seems Islanders weren't the only ones dealing with troubled orchards. Coming up, the original Apple entrepreneur, Amarjit Chatana, takes his Apple growing dream next door to New Brunswick. What went wrong? We were with the bad people. We were, we were, we were a guy who want, who, who, whose intention wasn't planning an orchard, was doing a con job. Since 2014, Canadian Nectar's business plan seemed to hinge on investors funding the main goal, shipping apples to India. And this block, this block, this block, this block, this block belongs to a Mr. Satija. But then there's various lots, uh, lot 17, lot 18, lot 19. The model, divide up the orchard into small parcels, each sold to an investor, managed as one. I thought it was one large farm, but these are all independent people. But that plan would lead to the split of the original ownership group. As far back as 2014, Canadian Nectar was offering 10 acres for $400,000, with Amarjeet Jatana and Gurmont Graywall quoted in this media report. Former Deputy Prime Minister Sheila Copps, who had a small share, says Kamalpreet Kara 
was also pushing to tie investment in the orchard to immigration. You can expand your business and you can you can get the permanent immigration. What specifically did he want to do? Let's say you've got 10 acres per whatever. You could get yourself a little um, legal business by purchasing the land and then coming and working the land and then immigrating. We definitely didn't want to go there and the government of PEI did not want to go there. So it was a no. And yesterday I had an uplifting meeting with Dr. Amarjeet Jatana, who was the president and CEO of Canadian Nectar Products. Instead, the PEI government, including then Premier Wade McLaughlin, was helping to promote Canadian Nectar's apple export plans, including on a trade mission to India in 2016, political credibility that impressed Indian investors. It's approved by the government is fully behind the operation, and that's why our bosses may be invested in the company blindly. Aman Panwar runs another PEI apple farm called Jai Estates. His bosses, both from India, say they set it up after their investment in Canadian nectar failed. They told us Jatana would send them photos of Canadian politicians to convince them to invest. Yeah, so at the time he's a premier. If you show this to any individual in India and say, this is our company, and we know the deputy prime minister or the premier of the province, anybody would pay you in just a blink of an eye. They would think it's all legit. The Jai Estates founders filed a lawsuit, claiming they were never given the land they paid for. Among those they accused of mishandling their money, Germont Greywall. Some investors have accused Canadian Nectar of fraud. What, what would you say to that? I'm not familiar of anything and I didn't do anything of that nature. I have kept myself very clean. I am not responsible for anything. I was the vice president, but uh, I was not uh, involved with the day-to-day -day operations. When I tried to see the documentation, Mr. Jitana was resisting. Later, Canadian Nectar ordered an audit that turned up no evidence of financial improprieties under Greywall and Jitana. But in 2016, Canadian Nectar Products directors in India met to decide the company's fate. Amarjit Jatana, the co-founder, was out, and Greywall sold his shares. Why not step in and, and take over things and, and have a hand in the day-to-day -day operations and, and, try, and try to clean things up? Yeah, you, you are right. I had a minor share. If I had a bigger share, I would have been dominating. But you were one of the founders of the company, though. You, you were there when it began. But I didn't have enough capital to invest. Therefore, I didn't have uh, financial dominance. When Grimant and J Jatano left, I just left because I, I couldn't navigate the I couldn't navigate the politics of it, which is something to say for me. Even though she held on to her two percent share, Cop says she stepped back and left other minority investors to call the shots. I think the minority shareholders were wanting to get control of the company so that they could do other things that they wanted to do with it, and they had ideas other than apples in their minds. This is how immigration consultant Kamal Preet Kara ended up in charge. The Fifth Estate has attempted to contact Kara numerous times. We've yet to get a response. In his time at the orchard, Steenbruggen says investors showed up demanding answers. We were promised uh, a piece of land. It was supposed to be a return on our investment, and we'll be able to come here and build a house and live here and be part of PEI. And what did they say they were promised about citizenship or permanent residency? Mr. Kara was supposed to provide that stuff, and that's when I realized that uh, this is we're not here just to grow apples, are we? Hello, Dr. Jadana. How are you? Fine. Welcome, Guniji. Thank you so much. He had been pushed out of Canadian Nectar products, but Amarjit Jatana didn't slow down. Uh, the way we are planting every year, right. we should be top one of the top five orchards in Canada. He was in New Brunswick, promoting his apple business to this lifestyle blogger. Just outside Moncton, he joined forces with Reginald Louise Petipa. Successful entrepreneurs, the couple planned to turn some land into a residential subdivision, but they say Jatana convinced them to transform part into an apple orchard. He was gonna sell this 
new project to the people from India so that they would have a house and they would be able to have an orchard in the back and then they would be able to get their citizenship faster. That, that was one of the deals that, that was they one would, of his big yeah, plans. One of his big of. plans that he, he, that, that he told, gave us. The couple vetoed that and went with local investors. He sold it like he was the real deal. Uh, my impression of him was that it wasn't good. Uh, I was uh, leery of him. The Petty Paws paid $200,000 up front, expecting Jatana to develop just the apple orchard. It was a complete mess. It was a disaster. I mean, there was absolutely no experience whatsoever planting trees. And him himself, AJ, he couldn't start a tractor. He didn't know how to start a tractor. But the couple had signed a contract, complete with timelines. So after a few months, with barely any trees planted, the Petty Paws cut him loose. The breaking point, you, he asked for 200, another 200, the job wasn't done. Employees hadn't been paid for two weeks. Matter of fact, I did the, I did the last payroll on the employee. Jatana sued the Petty Paws for breach of contract. They countersued, and after a nearly five-year court battle, they won. A New Brunswick court ordered Jatana to pay back the $200,000 the couple had invested. The justice also found Jatana was getting a kickback for the trees making $75,000 for what the justice called a bribe. So what went wrong? We, we, we were a guy who want, who, who, whose intention wasn't playing an orchard, was doing a con job, take as much money as he can from people. In a statement to the Fifth Estate, Jatana blamed COVID and drought for orchard issues in New Brunswick, points out he never took any government handouts, and also claims the kickbacks were rebates and discounts. Before he retired in 2016, Harjit Singh Sodhi had a successful taxi business in Toronto and never worked on a farm. Then he met Amarjit Jatana. He's a very good talker, so he can talk, explain and do things. Oh, wow, it's going to be excellent, everything beautiful. Like on PEI, Jatana was using his political connections to boost his sales pitch. So he showed me, you know, we're in touch with the government people and we are doing wonderful thing and in the newspaper is coming our news and that's that, you know, that's what he does. Yeah. Sodi says Jatana promised to build and manage an apple orchard. 400,000 for 10 acres and then we'll give you 100,000 every third year. After third year, we'll start giving you every year. So that's why I said it's good retirement uh, money for me. I was just about to retire. Sodi had never been to Bucktouche, New Brunswick before, but he flew there to meet Jatana and loved it. So we bought some land and invested with Jatana. From this house, it was my free house. So I bought another mortgage on it and then I paid him a million dollar as well. He paid Jatana? Jatana, close to a million dollar. It was a lot of money and Jatana's big promises left Sodi's wife Ravinder with a bad feeling. Like I said, uh, he's not a good guy, so I don't want to work with him. Yeah. But he said, no, no, he's a really good guy. In fact, Sodi says he convinced friends in India to also invest. But before long, problems emerged. He says Jatana wasn't setting up the orchard properly. If you're putting 50 gram uh, fertilizer, he was putting seven gram. So everything was like that. He was missing spray, the pruning was not done properly. Like the Petty Paws, Sodi says Jatana's business model was never just about apples. He believes it was selling a shortcut to Canadian citizenship. He wanted to be a big shot, you know, with people's money, and then do scam thing with it. He wanted to be a big shot, that's all. He wanted to be a king of something, you know. Unlike the Petty Paws, Harjit Sodi didn't have a clear way out. So after cutting ties with Jatana, Sodi and his wife had to work on the orchard themselves. Me and my wife was working seven days, day to night. It's a very hard, uh, you know, in the very sunny uh, uh, weather, a lot of mosquito there, but we didn't have any choice. If we don't do it anything, everything was ruined. Hemba, hemba, hemba. Sodi has relied on his family to get through the last seven years. 
He says the time he spent rebuilding the orchard is time he could have spent with his grandchildren. Well, it's very bad, very, very sad, and, you know, it's, you don't have a word. Like, sometimes, you know, you are very desperate. Jatana is facing multiple other lawsuits in New Brunswick from investors in India, all alleging similar issues and false promises. Was this ever about apples? No, it was never, never about apple. Never. It was all, it was all a, a big, 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 big scam. And I think his biggest scam was bringing people from India here to get citizenship and gouging as many people as he can. We wanted to ask Jatana about the allegations against him in New Brunswick and on PEI. His company still owns this farm about 40 minutes west of Moncton. Across the street is this house, listed to Canadian National Growers, Jatana's latest venture. My name is Stephen D'Souza. I'm with CBC News with the Fifth Estate. Okay. I'm working for Amarjit Jatana. Yes. But he wasn't there. An employee told us Jatana is out of the country and he's not sure when he'll be back. It was supposed to be an Apple company and it ended up being something else. Coming up, frustration over a government seemingly slow to act on Canadian nectar. I have just one word from them. These are leeches. Yan Lu and his daughter Emma are building a life in Canada. Now in Toronto, he's hoping to put the memory of the PEI orchard behind him and to one day soon have his family together in Canada. Lu is one of more than 30 former Canadian Nectar employees who reported the farm to the Canadian authorities and received an open work permit as a result. He's still waiting to sit down with CBSA investigators. The whole experience was like a nightmare for me. The CBSA raided the farm in 2022. Migrant worker advocate Ryan McRae says he's contacted the agency repeatedly since then. So far, no developments and no charges. Yeah, uh, frustrated again, so frustrated. And it just goes to show that not only are these issues systemic issues with their immigration system and the temporary foreign worker program, they're not even regulating it and double-checking themselves enough, right? So, yeah, like, I, I was frustrated. I was very frustrated. Despite the allegations swirling around Canadian Nectar and its affiliated companies, according to this Employment Canada list, the companies still qualify to bring in foreign workers. Employment Canada wouldn't explain, citing privacy. Over at Jaya Estates, the orchard started by two disgruntled former Canadian Nectar investors. Aman Panwar cautions this story just scratches the surface. It's just not the CNP and CWC. It's a big business back in India. These consultants, they give out false hopes to people and it's just bad. People fall for them easily. He hopes the foreign workers can move on, but for those behind their alleged mistreatment, I have just one word from them. These are leeches. They are sucking blood out of the local people and the foreign workers at the same time. It's just bad. CWC Immigration is still advertising a variety of services on social media. The college that governs immigration consultants suspended Kamal Prekaira's license. He can't work for CWC or as an immigration consultant until the CBSA investigation and whatever follows is complete. Canada, the restaurant industry, a billion dollar industry here. Just Lately, he has a new venture, promoting business investment in Canada. We see there's a tremendous potential. Uh, Amarjit Jatana spent years working his way into the halls of power. As recently as 2019, he was posing for photos with New Brunswick Premier Blaine Higgs. Why do you think so many politicians were willing to get on board with this? Because he's a con man and he did it to me too. Those politicians whose names and photos Jatana flaunted to investors, New Brunswick Premier Blaine Higgs, former PEI Premier Robert Giz, and his successor, former PEI Premier Wade McLaughlin, all refused to talk to the Fifth Estate about Canadian nectar products. As for the others who were on the ground with Canadian nectar at the beginning, why didn't you step in, though, given all of your experience and not having a hand in the day-to-day -day operations? Why not step Mr. in? Mr. Jitana had expertise in apples, so he took over. And uh, he wanted to run the business the way 
he chose, there cannot be multiple leaders. There is only one leader. And either you follow or you lead. If you had to do it all over again, what would you change? Uh, I will not blindly trust. Sometimes you are gullible. People join with you. They don't uh, tell you what they are doing, but they have other intentions. Uh, it is very difficult to manage. The only due diligence that I went through was pretty much Germain telling me that he's known him and he's solid and all this. And, uh, and that was the guy that I used for my due diligence was the former MP. From your perspective, was, was there fraud involved or do you think that this was just a business venture that just didn't go, didn't go the right way? Well, I can't speak to that because I don't want to be charged with libel, but I left the operation before they ever actually started uh, harvesting apples because I wasn't happy with the way it was being run. I think it was deliberately uh, running a dual identity company. It was supposed to be an Apple company and it ended up being something else. For all the promises, Canadian Nectar never shipped a single apple it grew to India. In multiple emails to the Fifth Estate, Jatana said he was overseas and in poor health, so he was unable to sit down for an interview. He says the information presented on him is one-sided, incorrect, and it's unbelievable he's being portrayed as a villain. He said he already had land. Arjit Sodhi, meanwhile, is trying to build up the orchard Jatana promised him. At the end, it's my place. I believe into my God with it, so I think, you know, I have to work hard, and eventually it will be paid off to me. If a businessman called you now and said, hey, I'm talking to this guy, I'm Arjit Jatana, what would you tell them? Oh, I said, well, stay away from them. You have some bloody money, throw it in the garbage and something, run away from here. Rod Steenbruggen says his repeated complaints about investors and workers soured his relationship with Canadian Nectar. He was fired in 2018. Today, he still lives a few doors down, choosing to make his home on an island that took so much. I'm pretty sure I'm out $200,000. It really, really took its toll on my wife. Um, and I'm sorry I got her in this mess. Um, but we came with best intentions. Uh, and we checked it out best we could. Um, they're just fraudsters is the way I would describe it. Do you think anyone on the island wants to take accountability for this, wants to face up to what happened here? I don't think they want to, but they need to, Stephen. It's, it wasn't just created. It wasn't, oh, it's a good idea. Let's grow some apples. Um, and then it went bad. And it's designed this way. Faith is gone, uh, trust is gone, and, and integrity left the island a long time ago, Stephen. A long time ago.